Buddy, I'm Lorenzo Clark, and this is Vegas Nonstop with Jonathan Scott. And that's right, hey, everybody. Hey, I'm Jonathan Scott, and welcome to Vegas Nonstop. Oh, Vegas Nonstop with Jonathan Scott, and, and tonight, the lovely Jen Scott. That's right. Oh. Yes, great comedian Jen Scott. Next to her, our headliner this weekend, Andreas Fernandez. Andy. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. right. I'm best. I'm not just keep my father from fifth to ninth. And that's right. That's the guy. <laughs> and then on the on the end over here, world champion magician, our feature act this week, Rocco. It's Rocco, everybody. Rocco, I think, is in witness protection, so yeah. don't be wearing those dark sunglasses. Yeah, his real name is Rocco. Yeah. <laughs> Ronald Solano. That actually has a nice ring to it. Ronnie Solano. So we are sponsored by Alien Tequila. Alien Tequila. And abduction in every bottle. Yes, it's out of this world. It's Alien it's Tequila, world. it's out of this world. And everybody. if you've been to Las Vegas, you know we're pretty close to Area 51, and aliens are amongst us. Oh, yeah. No, they're all over the place. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if you go see the David Copperfield show, shout out to our friend David Copperfield. Yeah, we just, we just had dinner with Rocco the other night. Uh, he makes an alien spaceship appear. In the audience, yeah. an alien spaceship Ooh. appear in the audience. It's well, pretty, it's pretty spectacular, I have to say. And I'm not going to give you a spoiler alert, but there might even be an alien sighting. I can't, I can't. <laughs> well, I know we're up for some magic on today's podcast. That's At least I'm true. hoping for that. And I know that, wait, that Andy, you're a chef as well, because I've done a little research. I, I have to ask everybody to give a favorite toast. I mean, we're, we're sponsored by Alien Tequila. Do you have a toast when you're with your friends? Well, you know, to, to life and good health. Everybody just make the most of it. There you go. To there life you go. and to good life. health and to make the most of it. To, most yeah. of it. to yeah. life, to life. Yeah. And here's to you and here's to me. And if by chance we disagree, then F you. F you, here's to me. <laughs> here's to me. All right, we have to have a little toast. Mm. It's, a, it's a weekend. Oh, I love this. You know what this is? This is dihydrous oxide. Ooh. Yes, H2O, dihydrous oxide. It's one of my favorite beverages. A little later on, we play a game called Truth or Brown Sugar. Uh, on one of our favorite classic TV sitcoms. And today, Jen picked 30 Rock. 30 Rock, and we also have Rock right here tonight. 30, ah, 30, there Rocco. We go. 30 Rock. 30 Rock. <laughs> so we like to talk a little bit about what's going on around so town. Friday night. Yeah, you guys grew up in New York, so yeah, it's it, is, it is Friday night, so we do have lots to talk about what's going on here in Las Vegas, because it is Vegas nonstop. Um, tonight, over at Silver Sevens, we've got Havana Nights, we've got DJ Andy out, uh, out in the patio, out uh, by the pool. Um, and we're, we're drinking tequila, we're drinking beer, we're having lots of fun. We're drinking dancing. Alien, alien tequila. tequila. An abduction Ooh. in every bottle. Yes, it's out of this world. Uh, inside we've got Gravidad, and we've got a Latin dance party going on. That guy's got a lot of Gravitas. <laughs> hey, and if you don't mind me mentioning, since you said Havana Nights, yeah. I have a show that I've produced also called Havana Nights. Come on. I do, but it's a private party that I bring Havana to you. I've been filming a documentary out of Cuba. For the past two years, he goes to Cuba. I go to Cuba. I have a Cuban restaurant. I don't feel you know, but no, I'm Cuban. <laughs> <laughs> but I, um, but I have. I'm filming a Cuban documentary right out of Cuba, okay? And uh, straight and out of Cuba. Straight out of Cuba. Out of Cuba. Nice. And with that, I put together a band night party. And what I do is I bring Havana and, and I bring Havana to you. I love that. Wow. I just came back from uh, Burbank where I go to a fundraiser every year with Andy Garcia huh. and our friend Joe Montaigne. Joe Montaigne was at my restaurant. Look, and Andy Garcia, by the way, I gotta tell you, Joe Montaigne was at my restaurant and he said that Andy loves my Cuban sandwich because Andy's been to his I, house. I, I my it. restaurant was near his house in Ventura. So Joe Montaigne came to my restaurant, loved my yeah, Cuban sandwich. Yeah, they're actually sandwich. in Toluca Lake. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. But we just came back. I was born in Silver Lake at Temple Hospital. Mm -hmm. So there you go. And it all kind of comes together. Then. Like, <laughs> it's, <similar> to <laughs> it's six degrees of separation. Rock and his name all is rock. And we love Cuban food and Cuban people and the I culture. I have to be the best Cuban chef. And do you still have a restaurant? Or are you no, I don't. I just got rid of my restaurant in December. Was it here or in? It was in Ventura. Ventura. Oh, yeah. Oh, the Copa Cubana. That's right. Great. And that was my Great. restaurant. Great in the harbor there. I own the church. Wait, do you guys have comedy shows there? I own the I own the together the Ventura uh, Comedy Festival. Yeah. Right. Shout out to Randy yeah. Lewis. Shout out to my friend Randy Lewis. And then every 
restaurant that was there. We would produce one yeah. hour. So we produced I performed four. at your restaurant. I performed at Hong Kong Inn. Look at this. You performed at my restaurant. That was at the festival. Okay. <laughs> okay. Tonight, you're going to be performing here at A-Stars Comedy. That's right. Tonight, at the A-Stars Comedy Show, we open the room at 7 o'clock. We have a free show party. We talk about great food. We have our food in the showroom comes right out of our five-star steakhouse called Joel's Chop House. So literally, you get the best the best gourmet bar bites in town. You get oysters Rockefeller on the menu here in the showroom. Unheard of in any comedy club, right? Right. We got we got handmade ravioli right here in the showroom. Really? Wagyu steak sandwich right here in the showroom, and everything else is fantastic. The food is amazing. And we're all going to yeah. be here. We're all going to be here. We're all going to be here. <laughs> be here. <laughs> Seven o'clock. The door is open. Tickets right. are available either on Eventbrite or you can come to the door and buy tickets at the door. Yes, you can. Or, or if you go to Vegas.com, you can get a special deal. They, they have a, a ticket price there, and they leave us a five-star review. We'll send you a four-pack of tickets. Hey, how cool is that? Uh, also, here at Ahern uh, Luxury Boutique uh, Hotel, we've uh, on uh, October 6th, we have a friend, Tony Moore, yes. who was the original keyboard player for Iron Maiden, and he's going to be doing a, a Sunday matinee show here. Iron Maiden plays on Saturday, Sunday. We're going to have Tony Moore here doing original music. If you like Genesis, you like Pink Floyd, you like Iron Maiden, Tony Moore's going to be right here on this stage. Uh, we probably have 100, 100 seats in here. Yeah, 125. So it's a very intimate room. It's a great room. Free parking here, by the way. Yes. Uh, also, the 10th, 11th, and 12th, I want to mention. Free parking. Yeah, free parking. yeah it's in Vegas. Vegas. It's in Vegas. Vegas. It's, 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 it's got free parking. That means free. Right. Right. What? You're You're also, if, you stay, if you stay in the hotel, no resort fees. No, no resort, resort fees. fees. What? Which is amazing. That is crazy. Yes. Never, unheard of. October 10th, 11th, and 12th, our friend Jackie the Joke Man Martin yes, coming in. Yes, Jackie the Joke Man. You might know from the Howard Stern Show, we're going to play Stump the Joke Man. That's right. With Jackie, where, you know, if you, you know a joke and, and he doesn't get the punchline, you, he gives you a t-shirt or something. Something like that. Some yeah, swag. It's going to be so fun. You, you know, know what swag it? stands for? Yes, yeah, stolen with, with a gift. Or something. Shit we all got. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, so that's any other announcements you want to make? Oh, sure. We got uh, amazing shows uh, coming up here. As a matter of fact, next weekend, Rocco is our headliner, doing his full magic act. But you're, you're on tonight. Tonight is the feature. He's going to give you just a short, a uh, little, uh, little taste. A little, little taste. taste. Little what he's got in store for you next Rocco. week. Oh, it's a taste of Rocco. And then, and then uh, a Rocco. next weekend, he's doing the big show, along with uh, our old friend who was on HBO's World's Greatest Escapes with his comedy straight jacket. Before anybody else would go to comedy straight jacket, Terry Ross is going to be our feature guy. And then with, uh, with Jackie the Joke Man Martley, we have our old friend, also from New York, Joe Monty, who was who does the three card money, but he was on Penn Teller's full list and he pulled Penn Teller. They so, about, we, got, we went back to Magic again, I have to tell you, the Jen and I went to see Chris Angel last night. We did. Night. Woo! We did. The Mind Freak himself. The yes, Mind Freak. Yes. Yeah. A lot of fun. He's invited yeah. us for Sunday. We've seen him a couple times before. He was a mentor to Rocco, you know. He, really? he, he, no, I didn't know. Yeah. How would I know? Yeah, yeah. he admired you, yes. Yeah. That's right. For you kids at home, the Joe Franklin show. That's right. It's just so on Chris the Angel, oh, Chris, oh, pick this, oh, picture this. Oh, Chris Angel as a kid saw Rocco on the Joe Franklin yeah. show when he was a kid and said, that's what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's a, Chris puts out a great show and, and he kind of takes you down memory lane where he, you know, he shows where he used to take the subway into the city and, sure. and he does some, some close up magic in the uh -huh. show. Yeah. And then he does the, um, the straight jacket routine where he's yes. upside down. Yeah, he does a Houdini style, hanging upside down in the middle of the show. And he let on that he's 56 years old and he's I can't in amazing shape. So. Wow. Chris Angel, everybody, mind free show. It's a yeah, it was really fun. Okay. Mm -hmm. I liked all the stuff in the hallway leading up to it too. Yes, free show. Cool free show is amazing. Yeah. He's got a big giant head on his face. Yeah. That's grabbing you. I like it. So in case you haven't figured out, the young lady sitting next to me is actually my daughter. It's true. Uh, that's <laughs> true. But she's actually a comedian. And, and, and has his testimony and that she performed in the, in the comedy festival. And that was so the was that was of eight years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. She came out of the womb laughing. She I came was out actually a comedian <laughs> before I was his daughter. So. Well, in the other said, world. In the other world. Yeah. So we've got a lot of announcements, a lot going on. So since, since, since we were just talking about magic, I know Rocco is, is always ready to do a trick. I'm so sorry. Well, did you ask me to put band with it? You want to start with the magic? Yeah, yeah, While we're at the top yeah. of the show? Well, something. Because I read something, something about cigarettes disappearing. That's a key magic. So I said to him, I noticed with key that Albert Dachshund taught me 40 years ago. I did it two, three times in my life. 
was a picture of Johnny Carson doing the thing. Yeah, we were talking about Johnny Carson being the well, Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson was Johnny a magician. Carson. Yes, and, and of course, Johnny Carson was a longtime member of the Magic Castle and always featured Magic Castle on his show. And uh, Rocco, you have the trick that the, the, the trick that Johnny Carson did. I'm okay. That's a wild stuff. The rules slip. The makes it better. Everybody back there, take a sip of What you're about to witness day. is an illusion. Here we go. That's, that's, a, that's a tea cigarette. Oh, he lights it with the sugar. That's very difficult to do. Okay. This is a modern-day interpretation of the classical magic. The, wait a minute. Look at this. Reminds me of home. Yes. There's at least two. Wait, there's another oh. cigarette. It's another cigarette. So there's three there. Wait a minute. Yeah. So the cigarettes are multiplying in front of our very eyes. That is unbelievable. And I think it looks like they're almost all lit. They're almost all lit. Lit AF, as the kids would say. Yeah, right. And they're smoking. That's, that's the smoke one, two, down. three, four. There's one right here. One right there. So much and now there. it's what? gone. That one's gone completely. And it comes back. Oh, wait, it's back. Wait, it's gone. It's back. It's back. It's still lit. And it's still lit. Wow. It's the world champion edition. Rocco Solano. That's right. From Rocco. Patterson, New Jersey. Early on in his career, Rocco studied, and correct me if any of this is wrong, uh, with and was managed by sleight of hand expert and Tony Slidini. Uh, protege Bill Wish. Yes. Solano studied with Wish for at least four months in 1980 when Wish taught him many Slidini routines, including what we just saw, I'm guessing, the no, a different cigarette uh, production. He didn't teach you. This is all wrong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Slidini was famous for doing cigarette magic, and Rob also could do his, his Slidini. I, I think I got it off of your, uh, I don't know where I got it. I, it might have been Wikipedia. Wikipedia is always wrong, and that's what I like about it. It's true. Well, let's, let's, I know for sure. That, that he did command performance for the Queen of England, the late great Queen of England, Queen for, Elizabeth. for Muhammad Ali and for Michael Jackson. And I know personally that Muhammad Ali loved doing magic. Yes, he, he, he did. always had some. He always did right? He did. Yeah, he always had a little magic in his pocket or something. Yeah, so yeah. Michael Jackson. Yeah, Michael Jackson. Yeah. Yeah, Michael Jackson saw you on Masters of Illusion. Yeah, the very first Masters of Illusion to produce live butterflies. Yeah, he had to do a command performance. Yeah, he invited me to first week in New York to perform for his son's birthday party, Prince. And Paris Prince Michael. Yeah. She was in a stroller, and he was going to do butterfly. And for Rocco, he was a real artist. Then he was going to butterfly. Ah, for Rocco. Yeah. Look at that. Now, it, it, it's, it's, I think, tough to talk about magic rather than performing magic. But I have something here called a uh, gable top milk carton illusion. No, that was an invention I had that I had nothing to do with magic. No, it was a way to make a, a, a milk carton be disposable for easy recycle. Right. This bio is like two <laughs> truths in a lie. <laughs> I love it when they're wrong. So I, I patented a technique that allowed the bottom to flip out and open, open up, so and you flatten it out, and you throw it away. You're not throwing a big clump, it flattens out. So I patented it. But that's it. He has, he has a magical mind. He creates right, the, right. these matches. This what is pays fact. better, the magic or the milk? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think he got his, well, he's got his picture on the outside of the hotel on the marquee, and he also has his picture on the milk cart. But Rocco, we found it. Rocco's the recipient of the Merlin and Golden Lion Awards, a two time winner of the coveted Manhattan Association of Cabaret Awards. That's all true. Nominated nine times as Magician of the Year by the Academy of Magical Arts yeah, so in four different categories. That's true. Lorenzo and I have talked about uh, magical arts before and how the average person just thinks of you know that, but there's other things that really are magical arts, That's like right. ventriloquism and hypnotism and, and, and all the isms. And mesmerism, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I know about me. He's the interviewer. I talk for a living. You know, it's funny because Rocco, 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 Rocco was on a show that was created specifically for VH1 called Celebrity Cadaver, mm -hmm. where different celebrities, we were just talking about this yesterday because we're friends with the Beach Boys, and Carney Wilson 
who was from Wilson Phillips, was on the show with Rocco uh, on Celebrity Cadaver. We were just having this conversation yesterday, talking about famous, we were talking about Michael Jackson, we were talking about the Beach Boys, and Wilson Phillips. You know, very, you're you're very close with the Beach Boys? No, no, no. Oh, you were close with the Beach Boys. Because our, our friend John Wiedemeyer. No. Our friend John Wiedemeyer. Yeah, John Wiedemeyer. Is now playing guitar with the Beach Boys. Shout out to Johnny Wiedemeyer. That's right, he's coming he, soon. He took Billy Hinchy, my dear friend Billy Hinchy's place. I was very close with Billy. Okay. And Billy was part of Dino Desi and Billy. Wow. Uh, you know, the original 1960s group that Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin discovered. Yeah. And it was a tragic club. I would have Billy on the radio or television, whatever media was on, every summer because Beach Boys. Yeah. You think summer, you think the Beach Boys. That's right. Rocco's right, the only fact, American. Christian Love, who's, who's Mike Love's son, who's in the band currently, who's seen Help Me Rhonda in, in the current show, he has, he, yeah, Help Me Rhonda, that's his show. He has, yeah, he has his own uh, brand new single out called Some Sun Summer. So shout out to Christian Love. While we're talking shout about out. famous families, you have a 10 year old coming here that's a kind of a descendant of Humphrey Bogart. Yes, yes. Writer B, Writer B. Well, he's B. like a fifth cousin. Or yeah, yeah. The B, the B stands for Bogart, he's straight out of Malibu. Uh, he goes to the James Cameron School for, for Gifted Children of, of Artistic, Artistic uh, Persuasion. And, uh, and he's a rock and roller. He was just on stage with David Bowie. He's, oh. he's good friends with Well, he couldn't have just been on stage with he, David Bowie. Uh, he was in, he was Maybe in, Zoe Bowie. Zoe Bowie. But he was, he was, he was, uh, he was uh, on the Kelly Clarkson show. He's got an AT&T commercial. He's going to be here at the Adrian Hotel, October 18th. Get your tickets now. Rider B. Rider B. Is he a rapper? No, no, no. Straight rock and roll. Cool. He is a rock and roll. He plays. Yeah. He's he only plays, nine. Yeah, he's only nine. He plays. He plays. He plays the uh, the Roxy, the Rainbow, the Sunset Strip, the Troubadour, uh, the the uh, the, uh, the Viper Room. He's. Uh, yeah. We've talked about all those places yeah. before. He's, he's amazing. So yeah. shout out to Ryder B. Rocco's Ryder B. the only American to win awards in two FISM World Tournaments. Yes. So FISM is like the Olympics of Magic. It's Federation International Society of the Magicians. Right. I school. I think that way. And, and he won he won a couple of different awards, but the last award they won was for the most original magician, and that award had not been given out since Harry Blackstone Senior in the fifties, right? Yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah, that's correct. And all the award after this. And you've been all over the world. You in, in, in Yokohama, Japan, yeah. most original act in right. Stockholm, Sweden. Yeah. I have a question though. At magic competitions, yeah. are the other magicians trying to make each other disappear? <laughs> Never? Yeah. Well, that that would be <laughs> That's his family in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> They're in the cement business. <laughs> yeah, so the next thing, everybody come down and see the show. I'd like to share my magic with you. And you're going to be the headliner here next week. Next weekend. Yes. And this weekend, Rocco, where do you home for you? New Jersey. Oh, still. New Jersey. Yeah, I was in the season, then it's in the morning. Got it. Mm -hmm. He lives in Patterson, New Jersey, right over the bridge. On the Blue Castello. Yeah. For you kids at home, Lou Costello That's right. was part of the comedy team of Abbott and Costello. Hey, hey Abbott! Hey, Abbott. Hey, Abbott. Hey, Abbott. Hey, Abbott. Who's on first? I don't know. I'm okay. the only millennial that knows what you guys are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Andy Fernandez for 35 years. 35 years. Chef Andre has been a stand-up comic who's done it all. Sitcom, TV appearances, cruises, headline clubs around the country, USO shows, documentaries. But performing? That's just the tip of the iceberg for this eccentric man of many talents who marches to the beat of his own drum. Did you write this? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> you have a drum. No stranger to hustle. Andy grew up above his father's bakery in Brooklyn. I'm guessing this is all true. We're not going to have any contradictions with you. He took his service industry chops national while working nightclubs. 2007, Andy decided to become a restaurateur. Ventura Harbor Comedy Club, we were talking about before, was just the beginning. Andy went on to open Andre's Wine and Tapas. And Everybody the, thought I said topless, and I lost a lot of business. <laughs> I still say in Vegas we should have topless tapas. <laughs> now we're talking. It won't be at the Ayer, but I know it won't be here at the Ayer. No, not the Ayer. But it might be on Dean Martin. Uh, they would have the topless tapas. Uh, uh, the Savory Cafe. Savory Cafe, the 805 bar. The 805 bar and grilled cheese. Yeah. It wasn't a bar and grill, it was a bar and grilled cheese. That sounds lovely. That was my concept. I've been yeah. wanting a grilled cheese. Because I do lot. restaurants like I do kind of my career. I try to be creative. I try to be unique or authentic. It had to be and big. So, and it had to be big. And I wanted, in fact, what I did was then when I opened up my Cuban restaurant, not, let me let you finish reading that. Go ahead. Okay, good. Hey. <laughs> the Copa Cubana. That was the next one. The Copa Cubana was my Cuban restaurant. 
So my Cuban restaurant and my grilled cheese restaurant was my unique, my most unique idea. I opened up my grilled cheese restaurant first, then there was a sushi restaurant next door, and I had my eye on their restaurant for a long time, and I knew that their kitchen was right behind my kitchen. So eventually, it took some time. It took some investigating, it took some time. And I made, I made good friends with the owner, and I used to go over there, and he'd always be like, why don't you, why don't you always come in and look around? You know what I mean? <laughs> So I had the, I took over the sushi restaurant next door, I made it my Kiva restaurant, broke through, so I had two restaurants with one kitchen. It was nice. a very unique restaurant. I, I have to ask if you're a cigar smoker. I am. I am. I mean, I don't smoke regularly because I'm trying to not. Right. I haven't had a cigarette in 24 years, and so I'm, I'm careful about it, you know, not smoking too much. But going back and forth to Cuba, because I'm filming a documentary out of Cuba. I can't wait to see it. I mean, i got to tell you, it's, yeah, and it's, it's going to be really fantastic, because what I'm doing is, I mean, I'm really trying to bring my father's country and my country together. I'm born and raised here in America. I'm an American, and my father's from back home Cuba. My father's passed on. But because of the embargo, my whole life, I've never known my family. And I believe that what I'd like to do in my life is see if I can heal wounds and stuff. Well, I, I, I can't wait to see it, and you know, again, being friends with Joe Montaigne and Andy Garcia, uh, and and Carlito Puente, uh, you know, I, and I had a cigar, I closed a cigar magazine for seven years, and I got to know a man named Avelino Lara, and Avelino Lara was responsible for the uh, developing the Esplendido, the Cohiba Esplendido, for Fidel, uh, you know, he and and these people at Great Cliff Cigars actually bought Avelino Lara from Fidel Castro to move him to, to Nassau, Bahamas, so he could roll cigars in their lobby. Ah. And he wanted me at some point to do his life story about growing up in, in Cuba and making cigars for Fidel Castro and having his family actually buy him from Castro to, to get his freedom. Uh, he was a wonderful man. He's no longer with us. Uh, but it was a great, the Great Cliff Cigar was the equivalent of a, a Cohiba Esplendido. My favorite was still the Simon Bolivar uh, Petit, uh, Petit Corona cigar. Which tasted like dope to me. <laughs> that those cigars are just so so darn good. Yeah. But I'd love to see your your documentary. Yeah. I was always invited to go and I never went because it was always well, the same. I can take you there. I would love. I to. can take you there. I can take anyone there. In fact, I did a tour this year. I took my first group of people because my first year I started going there myself and discovered Cuba. Now that I've been going there, I've connected with my family. I now want to start taking people there. So that's why I also have this Havana Night Party. So if anybody wants to have a night party in their house, I come to your house and I bring food, I cook it, I just, you know, I, I, I a demonstration of how to make food, the Cuban dancing, music, I give you a little bit of history on Cuba. You play Babalu? I play Babalu. Babalu! 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 Lucy! Or little Ricky to bed. And then, and then, and if you want to go even further, if you'd like to actually go to Cuba, I can take you to Cuba. So my tour was a legal tour. We're not allowed to go to the Americans. It's an I was always allowed because I was on television and radio. I had diplomatic exactly. immunity. Exactly. And I had a cigar magazine. So and that's what he was doing during my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> when Ted was little, and for show and tell, she brought tobacco leaves. Uh, I got in trouble because she brought tobacco leaves for show and tell. She was like seven true. years old. Because you the polka leaves at Because I knew how to fall. I mean, I, I knew how to fall. Normal stuff. Normal normal stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but that's wonderful. If people want to. Have a, have a Havana party at their home or at their party, how would they reach you? Well, if I can give them you any information, you can you can email me at andresandyfernandez at gmail.com. I'll get in touch with you. Andres, A-N-D-R-E-S. E-Z, I think. No, A-N-D-R-E-S. A-N-D-R-E-S. Then my middle, then my name, Andy. A N D Y. Just like on my last name, Woody Shoe. Fernandez, F E R N A N D E Z, at gmail.com. Or you can drop us a note, uh, yeah. uh, you know, if you're watching this. And, 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 and literally anywhere in the country, I'll go. I will. I'll fly to wherever anybody wants to party. And I'll, and I'll do the show. I'll put it together. I'll get all the supplies. Come to your house. Cook the food. And you walk in the supplies. And the food is amazing. No, my, my parties, I'll show you a clip of one of the parties that I've done. Well, I have to tell you, we go to this uh, party with, with Andy Garcia and Joe Montaigne once a year. It's a fundraiser yeah. for education, and they have 
full-on Cuban food, Cuban menu, and Arturo Sandoval and the Cuban All-Stars playing, wow. they have Arturo Sandoval in the back line because they have the older singers in the front line. You've got a Grammy Award-winning trumpet player in the back line, wow. but he's getting older, but, but it's just it's a wonderful event, and um, it's, it's the Fuente Family Foundation, and they have it every year at Burbank, uh, at Lakeside Golf Course in Burbank. Uh -huh. Running a comedy club while owning restaurants, easy for this Energizer Bunny. Andy hosted shows, nightly performing stand-up, and promoted his business on local radio station, all at the same time. All at the same time. Kind of like magic. I kept myself busy. Busy, busy. Even a pandemic couldn't slow him down. You did write this, didn't you? <laughs> and he rekindled his love for sculpting and dove. I almost read dove. And dove headfirst into filming a documentary in Havana that we're talking about. Searching for his roots and answers to life's big questions in life. In life. Seriously, why do we always have to build everything? I don't know what you mean by that, but... No, because I... They, 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 so, so I didn't actually write it. I told somebody <laughs> as they were writing it, and so they must have made a, a typo, you know. But that was something that, uh, like, that, like, you know, growing up, my, my, we built everything right now, everything, every project, because that's what Cubans do. We don't buy things, we don't hire you people, fix we just fix it and do it ourselves, you know. And we never have tools, right? We fix everything with a butter knife, okay? My, <laughs> everything, everything in my house, every project started with we can do it, we can do it. <laughs> But it always ended with, nobody going to see that. <laughs> <laughs> with his businesses closed in December 2023, Andy's back to his roots, stand-up comedy, and personalized Havana night parties. Andy brings them out to your house, even launched educational tours to Cuba. I want to go. I really do want to go. I love the cars. I, 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 I want to go this time, too. We'll take Jack. Hey, 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 it's a red car. 55 Dodge. 55 Dodge Rambler, Dodge Kingway. That Kingway? Kingway. Kingway. Let's do a comedy show. Yeah. 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 Andy loves building, cooking, performing, all oh, with his own unique touch. He even started sculpting clients in his spare time huh. because who needs a day off? <laughs> uh, book Andy today, experience a unique blend of build, cook, and perform. And there's your your, your Gmail again. What, what are you talking about with, with sculpting? What, 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 media? what are you sculpting? So, yeah, I need sculpting there. Jude? So this is Dude. some of my sculpting. Uh-oh. It shows the sculpting. Yeah. I mean, Charlie Fleischer, he had big graphics. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love Charlie. I worked, I had, to, I had the, the opportunity to work with Charlie. Uh, yeah, we just had Charlie here in our A-Stars comedy Please! Please! Yeah, she was so fantastic. So this is some of my, by the way, this is some of the clips that I yeah, have in Cuba. Yeah. It's going to be too so, small to see. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you're not going to see that. But you can send it to me and I'll put them on the website. Vegas non-stop. Vegas non-stop. Yeah, hey, hey well, welcome to the show where we look at watch people. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> look at people. So, so, so this is this I is want you guys to know this is a girlfriend. text conversation with Ava, himself. Ava Garner. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so actually physically making a statuary <laughs> sculpture. So, so that's clay. This is my this is my grandson. So he made an audio animatronic of his grandson. I mean, I mean, I do those things that I enjoy. And basically, I mean, I don't even really consider myself necessarily like an artist. I'm more of a builder. You know what I mean? I'm more of a person that can build. As long as there's a butter knife. I'm more of a person that can build anything. I do, and that's how I look at something. I'm like, okay, it's not like like art. It's like okay, well, I do, 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 and I figure it out, and I do. Because I believe it or not, Cubans are like that. We just figure things out. That's, that's right. right. Have you found any good Cuban restaurants here in Las Vegas? You know, there was. There was one right, actually right across the street. It used to be called La Florida which is oh. a famous name of a restaurant in I, I heard that they serve alien tequila. And have ducks in, in every bottle. Shout it's out to George Harris. It's out of this world. George Harris and the alien tequila is and, and that was a very good uh, Cuban restaurant. But you know what? Speaking of good restaurants, you know what we have here? We have Joel's Chop House. I think we went to right Five Star Steakhouse. <laughs> one of these weeks we're going to have Chef Joel on. Yeah, and maybe next week. And then on the bottom uh, level, on level one of the Adrian Hotel, so we have uh, Ottimo Pizzeria Cucina d'Italia. And also uh, breakfast and lunch and great burgers. And well, I gotta tell you, I ate today and I had their burger, and they have this burger with pork, and I mean, it was just unreal. It's not real. 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 It's not real
No, I, I think we need to mention Lorenzo is also the host of the comedy show and also a magician as well as a comedian. Yes. And I, I would have to call you a mentalist as well because when you do what I love, you do the, your, your your memory thing with the movies and the yes, television shows. Yes, it's yes. amazing. So if you haven't seen Lorenzo do his stand-up, you're in for a treat. Again, tickets are available either tonight, on Eventbrite. Tonight I will be doing no magic. I will be doing only the great show tuning. <laughs> and, that, and that's a character where I sing the TV show theme songs from the 1970s. So. No, I haven't seen that yet. I've that's only right. seen the movie. I've only seen you do the movie for that. It's just amazing. Yeah. Did you bring the magic for us today? No, no. I oh, you left it all for Rocco. Rock he might have another trick on him if you want to see another trick. Said no to me just now. Um, not to you, right. to magic. Another right, cigarette. Alright, so a little smoke. Right. Yeah. 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 Y
Gina yeah. Fey was the star of the show. Yeah. Go ahead, Jen. Alec Baldwin played the boss. Tracy Morgan did it as like the chaos yes. person. Yes. Yes. And it's, uh, and it's just about what's, what's, right now. What's the guy who played the uh, the intern or the or the page? Oh, uh, Jack um, Mayberry. Jack McBrayer. McBrayer. There you go. A yeah. UCB guy. They're all UCB people. Yeah. Up right to the school brigade. Thank you. Yep. So okay. I'm going to ask some questions, and there's no right or wrong. It's just uh, really to encourage more conversation. I love that. Yeah, the right. one is the truth, there's a ball, there's a BS. So here, here's the first question. Authority Rock, was it supposed to be a show about news or sketch comedy? Mm -hmm. Jen? I feel like news. maybe news because Tina Fey was Weekend Update, right? Yeah. That's my guess. Kelsey? I'm going to say it was supposed to be about sketch comedy. Jeff Andy? Marco? Mm -hmm. They originally pitched a show about Bill O'Reilly, like news program, yes. in which she'd play the producer. The first pitch was not unlike the newsroom on HBO, she later told Rolling Stone. NBC Vice President Kevin Riley told her she should use her time at SNL as inspiration, and although she was initially not into the idea, it seemed so lazy to just write about writing. She came around when she thought about casting Tracy Morgan. It didn't hurt that they had Lauren Michaels' blessing, who had signed on to executive produce show. That's yeah. interesting because the pilot is basically that. Like Say, the pilot is knows. essentially, well, I just rewatched it recently, uh -huh. which is why I even thought of it at all. <laughs> um, but the pilot is very, once Tracy Morgan becomes a part of the show, she's on board with the show, and that's pretty much the pilot. Yeah. So, yeah. interesting. 30 Rock and was called the girly show. Yes, TGS. Wasn't the first choice for the title. Truth or BS? What was it? 30 Rock was not the first choice for the title. Does anyone go with the first choice for no, the title? I'm going to say that's true. It's not the first choice. Yeah, I don't think anyone ever gets not the first choice. Not the first choice. The show was originally going to be called Rock Center. Oh. They preferred the title The Peacock, but NBC didn't want them to mock the company logo. Yeah, don't mock, don't mock a peacock. Don't mock a peacock. Ah, 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 ah. By the way, <laughs> we're currently on it. Here. Channel That's right, three, we love the Peacock. Three, Channel 3 Las Vegas. Uh, we, we, we respect the Peacock. Yes, with Lorenzo and I and, and Jen are working on a show called Insomniac Television. Ooh. And it's scheduled to premiere October 19. Wow. We're and my clown, my clown ensemble is going to be in it. We're called Crazy Eyes, and we're going to appear, be, be, be appearing in Stand Up and Clown in, in Los Angeles at the Elysian Theater on Monday night for Chad Damiani's show, where Ooh. he bullies stand up comedians until they cry. <laughs> it's the best show in town. <laughs> no one involved. You laugh, you laugh right now. <laughs> <laughs> no one involved expected Alec Baldwin to accept a starring role. Truth or brown sugar? Um. Yeah. Does anyone expect any Baldwin to have a starring role? <laughs> uh, no one expects. Especially not Stephen. No. Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole other play of potatoes. Yeah? <laughs> yes, so, I've got too many jokes running in my head to yeah. shot someone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that at the time, Alec Baldwin was coming out being a movie star, and someone did not expect him to be the star of the uh, That makes sense. Uh, like he was too big. Too big for TV okay. at the time. Chef Andy? I would say simply. Yeah, me too. I agree with that. Faye denies that the Liz, oh, I'm sorry. Faye created the character of Jack Donahue for Baldwin, but she never thought he'd actually do the show. She didn't even reach out to him before holding auditions for the part, but Baldwin happened to be hosting SNL around that time. I think he's done it six or seven times now. Yeah. So Faye and Michaels mentioned the part to him, and they said they couldn't believe that they got him, and uh, they got him. I think that that's the best role he's ever done. It's like perfect for him. Yeah. 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 Next question, Baldwin based Jack Donahue on Lauren Michaels, Truth or Road Trigger? Donahue. I'm going to go Donahue. true. Definitely true. Jeff Andy? I'm going to have to just follow the lead because I don't know. Sure. You don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know who, you know who Lauren Michaels is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Lauren Michaels is like who owns all of comedy, pretty much. He produces SNL, he produces this, every movie. He's he reported to be Dr. Evil. He's, he's Canadian. <laughs> And he started in Saturday Night Live, Lauren Michaels. Uh, Faye denies that the Liz Jack relationship was based on a relationship with Lauren Michaels, but Baldwin took inspiration from him anyway. He told uh, NPR that professionally Jack is a prototype of several GE executives, but in his personal life, he's Lauren Michaels. As he always says, Lauren is someone who has a tuxedo in his glove compartment of his car. Okay. And so, yes. So, yeah. So, Lauren is a friend and he adores Lauren. A tuxedo in the glove compartment of his car. <laughs> That's pretty cool. He's got a Maserati with a tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
The writers created the Jack Liz relationship based on Mary Tyler Moore and Lou Grant. Ooh. Truth or brown sugar. That sounds. Well, you know, I mean, I was, I a, I was a Mary Tyler Moore kid first, and I can see that. I was, I was a big fan of Mary Tyler Moore. Yeah. Sure, we can take the world down with a smile. I never would have drawn that conclusion on my own, but I think that that's probably true. Certainly, yeah. 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 yeah, I think I think that's true. I want to hear more of the song. Yeah, yeah. come tonight. 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 I will be here tonight. Yeah. Um, it's whatever. Imagine we don't come. <laughs> no, you better be here tonight. They said Jen Scott's performing at a Bailey Center event that the Liz and Jack relationship was a tough dynamic to define, but the writers landed on somewhere between Mary Tyler Moore and Lou Grant and Han Solo and Princess Leia. <laughs> Next question, Tracy Morgan was really friends with his on-screen friend, Grizz. Truth or Road Sugar? That's like, he's never even seen the show, so that's like just well, completely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. The role of the dice. Yeah, sure. They weren't friends? Grizz. Yeah. Morgan and Grizz Chapman, who played Grizz, were friends in real life before being cast on the show, and Kevin Brown, who played Dotcom, was once Morgan's manager. Oh. Next question, John Hamm auditioned for the part of Jack. Truth or brown sugar? I'm going to say true. I'm going to say true, too. Yeah, I'm going to say true, too. Though he didn't get the role, Ham went on to play one of Liz's love interests, Dr. Drew Baird. A lot of times when, when they're writing, they have to have an actor in mind, and they would keep referring to him. Like for this role, we said, and then Ham comes in, blah, blah, blah. I heard a funny story about John Ham recently. Go ahead. What's that? Somebody, oh, he hangs out with a lot of comedians. He goes to the comedy store a lot and hangs out. Ooh. And so, so I don't even remember this was secondhand for another comic. Somebody came up to him and was having a bad night and didn't realize he was John Hammond and said, hey, uh, can I have a cigarette? And then they realized it was John Hammond and they went, oh my God, you're John Hamm. And John Hamm went and said, you still want a cigarette? <laughs> <laughs> Tracy Morgan owned a pair of Rock Hudson socks and Bill Bixby's glasses. Wow. One brown sugar. Brown hmm. sugar. I don't remember Bill Bixby wearing glasses, but I think he did. Oh, Rock time. Hudson socks. Wait, who's Bill Bix? Yeah. The Hulk. Bill Bixby. Oh. He was the Hulk. He was also the magician. He was Eddie's also. Father. I should know that. He was also Eddie's father. The courtship of Eddie's father. The courtship of Eddie's father. People have to tell you that my father's friend. I just learned so much so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Is that in one of your... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all, it's all yeah. The courtship of Eddie Bob. <laughs> in the second episode of season one, when Liz is surprised to learn that Tracy Jordan owns a yacht, Tracy responds, I can't do it, boys. I got a yacht, I got a solid gold jet ski, two Batmobiles, the AIDS monkey's bones. The part was scripted, but according to Faye, his line ended there, and they needed him to keep talking as his character rounded a corner. So he improvised a few additional items like... The first moped, a pair of rock hats and socks, and a pair of Bill Bixby's glasses <laughs> for when he used to be your best friend. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, that joke makes sense now. Now, <laughs> Through the round sugar, the show contained almost 10 jokes per minute. Wow. I would say that's true. I would say that's too many. I would say too many. The show was known for its fast paced writing. In 2010, one blogger actually calculated. How many jokes there were per minute in the show? They determined there was an average of 9.57 jokes each minute. That's my favorite show. That's a roundup. <laughs> That's why it's my favorite show. I can rewatch it and there'll be new jokes that I didn't even catch before. It's so fast. You want to give a yeah. shout out to your friend that uh, wrote, wrote for the Emmy? No. Okay, no. What the hell are you? Oprah guest starred on 30 Rock. <laughs> Truth uh, or brown sugar? Brown sugar. Brown sugar. What was it? Oprah, the queen of the universe, uh -huh. guest starred on three, right? Yes, true. I knew that. Oprah made an appearance in season three, which was filmed in 2008, when Oprah learned that Faye was going right from an all-day Saturday shoot to her first appearance as Sarah Palin on SNL. She said Faye might be overextending herself. My favorite, that episode is great because what happens is Liz gets drunk and like on drugs on an airplane and thinks she's talking to Oprah the whole time when she's on an airplane, but it's actually just some black girl. <laughs> and so, but Oprah, then later on, Oprah appears. No, Oprah is in the show as the vision that is oh, that person. Oh, I see. But then it's revealed later that it was never Oprah, and you're just in Liz Levin's drug brain. Anybody else wow. have an Oprah story? Uh, let's see. Um, I watched her on the TV. <laughs> yeah. Not a thing I have an Oprah. I do. I, well, I was at NBC <laughs> in Chicago. <laughs> You set us up. You set us up. And Does anybody know anything about this? Oh, it's Magnum. Let's go back to Michael Jackson. I have a story. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, I went to Blankets, Hollywood.
Halloween party one yeah. year. Yeah. He goes by DJ now. That's Wait not a better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how Oprah fits into any of that, but um, yeah. Yeah. No, uh, I was oh, Stedman, was, I was on the 16th floor, and Stedman was on the 15th floor. We'd go to lunch together, and um, he was, Stedman was a was a public speaker, and um, and he invited me, and I invited uh, my then brother-in-law, who was a Presbyterian minister, oh. to go to Stedman's speech, her uncle, Jen, Jen's uncle, and we went and and. They're going around the room. There's only like 40 or 50 people of us in the room with Stedman. And they're asking people, oh, what do you do? I said, oh, well, I'm Lorenzo, and I'm a stand-up comic. I'm Andy, I'm a chef. And they got to me. They were I there, said, too. And I said, I'm Jonathan, and I'm also dating Oprah. Ah. <laughs> and, so, and then at lunchtime, Oprah came in, and she took all the you know all the focus off of Stedman, and then it became the Oprah show. But then back at NBC, Oprah, Oprah was there. Um, uh, Jenny Jones was shooting there. Oh, yeah. And... Um, and that's where I met Danny Bonaduce yeah. and and um, Bonaduce. It's more of a Stedman story. It was more of a Stedman story. Uh, but Oprah, our, her first manager was a guy named Jeffrey Jacobs. At one time, he was my attorney. Wow. And then I would see him, and I'd say, "Do you have any other clients?" He said, "No, I've got one trick pony, but it's a good one." <laughs> and he started Harpo Studios with yeah. Oprah, and he got ten percent yeah. of everything. Wow. That's good. Percent. Christopher Cross was a big fan of the show 30 Rock. Who's that? Truth or Brown Sugar. Sailing, sailing, sailing. He had a hit song. He had a hit song called Sailor. Oh, Chris, Chris Cross is going to make you. Chris Cross is going to make you. <laughs> All right, I'm going to say bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I don't know who that is, so bullshit. I'm going to say bullshit. I'm going to say bullshit. All right. In the season four episode, Floyd, Liz cries and sings a made-up Christopher Cross song. After watching the episode, Cross actually finished the song, then recorded a version of it and sent it to the crew. To return the, return the favor, the writers named Liz's last boyfriend, Chris Cross, after him. Wow. Last question. Alec Baldwin bought all of Jack's suits when the show ended. Truth or brown sugar? I'm just going to say truth. I'm going to say that, that he negotiated to keep them, but yeah. did not say, pay for them. I'm going to say BS, they just let him keep them. He bought them. According to Tom Broker, the show's costume designer, Baldwin really liked his wardrobe on the show, enough to take the suits home when the series wrapped. He wrote a big check to NBC. He likes his clothes and wants to look good. And that's how we play Truth or Brown, brown Sugar. sugar. Right. Yay. Speaking of Brown Sugar, shout out to Oprah. Shout out to Oprah. Actually, Oprah, if you're watching, we still love you, and you're still the queen of the universe. That's right. So appearing tonight, you can see all of these people right here at the A-Stars Comedy Room at A-Stars Comedy Show. 300 West Sahara, right off of Las Vegas Boulevard. That's right. Any closing statements? Rocco. The more I've been looking at you, the more you're starting to look like Buddy Hackett. A little Buddy Hackett. Shout out to Sandy Hackett. Sandy Hackett. Yeah, and that would make you Sandy Hackett. <laughs> For you kids at home, Buddy Hackett, not only was he in the bad, 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 bad world, but he was a great stand-up great comedian stand -up. here in Las Vegas yeah. and all over the world. He was a great stand-up comedian. And Sandy Hackett's still performing. And and I worked with Sandy one time. In Laughlin or here? I believe it was in Laughlin. Yeah. yeah. Sandy in had a comedy club in Laughlin. Yeah. I don't know if you ever met Sandy. I don't think so. Uh, we've been friends a long time. Did you say she watched my stand up though? It's a he. He. Sandy. Oh, he. Sandy's a guy. Uh, oh, he did. I, I sent him your little clip. Uh, you, can, oh. you can find Jen Scott on YouTube with some of her funny stuff. But yeah, Jen Scott will be appearing here tonight at the A Stars Comedy Show along with and then, Andy Andreas Fernandez and Rocco, world champion. Of the <laughs> and me, Lorenzo Clark. And Chef Andy will come to your house, come to your party, come to your bar mitzvah, well, and put on. And her. if you want to go to Cuba, I can actually take you there on a legal educational tour That's to so Cuba. Cool. We're going. And we can make an episode oh, no. of. Uh, Insomniac uh, Television. Havana Nights. Havana Nights yeah. at your very home or at your very yeah. party. Yeah. Yeah. Have me at your house for Havana Night. I'll show you the best time. I absolutely love it. Everything. Cuban food, coffee, Cuban coffee, cigars. Not Cuban cigars. It's illegal. It can't be but they're still illegal, aren't they? They're illegal. Yeah. And you cannot bring in, you can't do anything about it. Yeah. yeah. And everything I do is absolutely legal. Yeah. 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 It's all legal. So I make sure it's a, it's a legal tour. It's an educational tour. But when you're in Cuba, you can smoke Cuban cigars. Yeah, when you're in Cuba, people, that's right. How many it's people can you take on the tour at one time to make it really good? Well, I think, 20. I mean, I took, I took six, six teachers. And I went there and I was able to meet up with six Cuban teachers and we talked about the education system. And it's just about education. Right. Not comparing the country which is better or worse. It's just about the life of educating 
Okay. Many years ago, I wrote a, I wrote a book by uh, an author named Jonathan Posel, uh -huh. who, who talked about the education in Cuba. And he said that what they would do is they would have the kids work in the farms in the morning and then go to school in the afternoon. So they actually got something, you know, help the family, yeah. help everybody out. Yeah. And I don't know if that's still the case there. But. Well, well, I mean, Cuba puts a real emphasis on education. And, um, and it started actually, believe it or not, with, with, with Castro. And I'm not about, I'm not here taking the side of the other, but there was a thing called the literacy program, where at one point, they made, they made a point that they were going to, to be 100% literate. And they went and spent a year, anyone who knew how to read and write, kids, teachers, were all into the mountains to teach everyone. It's fantastic. My friend, Kathleen Murphy, did a great documentary called The Literacy Program. Look for it on YouTube. And uh, it's fantastic about this one year that Cuba made 100% made Cuba 100 And is your documentary ready to be seen yet? Or? No, no, no. Right now it's just an expensive home video. And what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> so, so when they, when they have a literacy program that they teach the kids any of the songs like Conjunction Junction and what you know, fun, <laughs> so they're going to phrase this like if and then but. Conjunction, and that's the school last rock. I'm trying to think of my, my friend who produced that. I'm just a My friend produced it, I, and I'm jumping out of my name, but he, he wrote a, he, yeah, he wrote a great book called God Wings. If you, if you, it's Squire Rushnell. S Q, capital S Q, Squire Rushnell produced uh, the Conjunction Junction and How a Bill Gets Passed. He was a TV executive at ABC TV Network, and he did Conjunction Junction and How a Bill Gets Passed. So we hope you learned something. <laughs> this is an educational yeah. podcast. I'm telling you, you learn something, you get entertained, you hear about alien tequila. It's out of this world. You know how to make the cigarettes disappear. The cigarettes disappear. Smoke into a bun. Smoke into a marshmallow. To the amazing Rocco tonight. Chef yeah. Andy tonight. Yeah. LC Jim Lorenzo Scott. Clark. Yeah. Jen Scott. Scott tonight. Hey. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. If you like us, please drop us a note. Thanks for watching, everybody. Like and subscribe.